Hi folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys, guys in a Ride. Ride. Today we're going to take a look at this beautiful 2019 GMC Sierra Denali trim. This baby has all the bells and whistles. And if you're new to our channel, take a minute to click on the red subscribe button at the bottom and hit that bell up at the top so you'll get notifications every time we have new content. So what do you say, Nathan? How about let's take a ride? Let's take a ride. Today we're in Mankato with our friends at Snell Motor Company, offering fine Buick, GMC, and Cadillac vehicles. All right, so let's take a look at how to navigate the driver's information system. So that's up here between your two gauges. And the way that you do that is you use these buttons on this side of the steering wheel. You've got a two, a left, right button, and then you have an up, down arrow, but they don't push. It's a rotary knob that does. So to navigate through and using to control this system up here, you want to uh, start by pushing uh, either right or left, and you get a menu system that shows up at the top. Hey, you got a house, you've got a letter I, you've got a musical note symbol, you've got an arrow for navigation, a phone symbol, and then a gear for settings. And then you just press the button and it goes through there. To access any one of these menus, say information, I can just go on there. And then, I don't know if you'll see, but there's a little scroll bar down here. You can see the little white arrow, the white line, excuse me, going up and down. And I've activated that by, of course, rolling this uh, rotary knob. So I can look at all sorts of different um, features that are available under infra vehicle information. Hey, okay, wanna go to the next category? You just press the right arrow. Now you've got music. And again, you can use the rotary knob up and down, change uh, stations. This is also a clickable one. So if I click, now I can go select uh, different media sources, right? To go back, I'm gonna press the left arrow. Right? I'm gonna continue over both the right arrow to navigation. Right? Here again, rotary knob doesn't do anything unless you click it, and then you can get recent some favorites that you've programmed in. Right? Left arrow to get out, right arrow to continue on. There's a phone. So you can control your phone from here. I'll hit the right button one more time. And now you can do um, set up things here, uh, like your heads up display, your speed warning. And again, to access any one of these, you would simply select it with a scrolling wheel and then click the scrolling wheel. All right, next we'll talk about how to navigate through your infotainment system. So this is a touch screen. And the way you're gonna do this is, is all right over in here. So I can take and just swipe like I do on a smartphone or a smart tablet back and forth. If I want to enter a particular function, I can click on it. Say if I want navigation and just click on it. Okay. To go back to your screen that you are on, you can either press the home button here or the home button here to go back to your previous uh, screen. Okay, um, I, so if I want to set up uh, uh, something under settings, I can click on settings. Now, this one has a few more things in it, so I can either just take and scroll, touch and move with the screen, or I can use the arrows. But I can also come over here to this dial and do the same thing. And then when I want something, you can see this little check mark here click it and it takes me in and then I can scroll to what I want and I can click and then I can click again to turn the automatic time zone off or back to on. Hey, okay, I'm going to press my home button again. 
I'm back to my screen that I started on. So you can, phys you can physically touch the screen and do everything from there. Or if you prefer a touch knob, you can use that. You can even see here that I can even switch screens. And then if I go slower, I can even go to different apps. So everything can be physically done with a physical knob and button, okay? or you can use the touch screen. And that's how you navigate the infotainment system. All right, so now we're going to talk about some of the other buttons that we did not talk about. And the first one I want to mention is the heads up display. What this button does is it raises or lowers the HUD display so that you can see it well and position it where you like it. Believe it or not, this inside of here, I showed you how to control these. This is the driver's information center. If you go over to systems and you go down to head up display and you do adjust rotation, you can actually adjust the rotation of the display. Now, when it's far, like all the way down or all the way up, the display itself has not tilted that far, but um, it is it is nice. Um, so I think I'm gonna see if you can see this. the The button on the left that I showed you it adjusts the heads up display higher up or lower down. There we go. That's a little better visibility. So right now it has a picture of a car on a lane and some uh, a speed setting. The info button that's in the middle between the heads-up display and the brightness display will change that. Like this is just giving you, um, so it changes that. It's just giving you, uh, um, it took away the car and the, uh, and, the, and the lanes. And if you click it again, you have just a big speedometer. Okay, so I can see just, just all I can see is miles per hour. Um, and then you've got a compass setting, and then you've got a mode where you can actually see if you're in all-wheel drive, what the angle of your car is, left front to back or right to left. Yeah, that is really a neat feature. That doesn't show up anywhere else. So it's in the heads-up display. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that, but uh, trust me, it's, it's worth taking a look at if you come to look at it. And then, of course, you have a, a brightness. Uh, if I press... I can dim it down a little bit so it's not so quite for dry, bright so driving at night or I can raise up the intensity to make it brighter if I'm driving in daylight um, and right now even though it's hard to see on the camera I can see it just fine all right and that is the heads-up display so the other buttons I want to show you are on the left side of the steering wheel and these ones are your cruise control so you, this is where you set it, and this is the gap distance. This has adaptive cruise control. Uh, so if you have cruise control on, and you want to change the gap between you and the car ahead of you, you can use that button right there. And then, of course, this one is your heated steering wheel. And then just a few more over here. You have got your power tailgate up and down, your hazards, your um, three-prong plug-in, your hill descent control, and then these don't light up, but they do show up on your dash. These will extend and retract your um, running boards. All right, so next we wanna talk about the safety systems that are available on the vehicle and that you can control. So uh, this vehicle has lane keeping assist, uh, lane departure warning, it has uh, blind spot monitoring, front collision alert, uh, following distance indicator, which I will show you that one. Uh, rear cross traffic and alert, uh, low speed forward auto braking, front and rear parking sensors, and a haptic driving seat, which gives you vibrations instead of uh, like an uh, audible alert, which is really a nice feature. So uh, there are more safety, there are some other safety systems that we haven't talked about, like the anti-lock brakes and the airbags, um, but every new vehicle has those. So we want to talk, focus on uh, the things that you can control. So in this particular vehicle, there are two ways that you can control these safety features. One is through your infotainment system and the other is through physical buttons that you have uh, out on the dash. So with that, let's take a look at what we have in the far as controlling safety systems 
in the infotainment system. So on the infotainment system, what you want to do to access safety features is first of all, just go to your home screen here or here, doesn't matter. Click on settings. Go over here to vehicle. And then you want to select collision detection systems. The first thing you have, which is unique here, is this alert type. You can set it to the safety alert seat, which will then vibrate. It's called haptic feedback. Or you can change it back to the audio beeps if you want. Click the back arrow to go back. You can control your forward collision system. You're going to have a message for off, just the alert, the alert and brake. And GMC does a nice job by putting a description right here on the right next to everything. I'm going to go backwards, front pedestrian detection, off, alert, alert and brake. And again, just touch to change it. There's no saving anything. You would just touch it and then go to the back arrow and you're out of it. Okay, scroll up, lane change alert, on or off. Tells you what it does, back arrow to get out of it. Park assist, click on that. Again, it'll tell you a description of what it does and you can have it off, on, or on with a tow bar, which is a really cool feature. Not seen that before. So if you're towing a car with a tow bar, that is gonna be a really nice feature. Otherwise, you just have to turn the system off. And then down here, you have rear cross traffic alert. Okay, on or off, again, a description, and then you would click out of here. Going back a couple more, then we are now back down to the, uh, uh, back to the main menu. And every other menu in this works the same way. Remember, you can use your physical knobs if you prefer. Next, we're gonna take a look at the safety systems that are actually present uh, with physical buttons on your vehicle. Okay, the safety systems that you can access through physical buttons are gonna be located down here. And they are the lane keeping assist, which will show an orange LED if it's on, as well as lighting up in the driver's information system. You have the park assist, which you can turn on or off. Again, that'll show up in your driver's information system. And over here, you have your traction control on or off. This one does not light up for some reason, um, but it does show up in your driver's information system that it is on or off. I am going to leave it on. And so those are the safety controls that you can access physically right down in this area. Okay, moving on, let's talk about the specifics of the uh, infotainment system. So this is a Bose sound system. It's very nice sounding. Um, and it does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And uh, it also has navigation. Uh, a Wi-Fi hotspot that you would have to pay a subscription for, but it's available. Uh, your audio, and one of the things that I like about this is that you have, you can set up users. Okay, so you can customize uh, pretty much all your basic driving settings. So your, your, um, your, your seat position, your mirror position, um, and some other things, create a profile. And then if you, you can set up for several people, right? But then if you go and drive another GMC Denali with the same system, you can download those from the cloud and sign in and all those settings will be applied to your, the vehicle that you're driving, which is really cool. There's one other app that I wanna show you and it's the camera app. So if I click on here, you're gonna see more angles than I think I've ever seen on a camera before. Okay. So currently I'm in split mode. This is bird's eye view. Okay, so they take a, you know, a, a static picture of the truck, but the cameras know where the truck is and it shows you the real surroundings. It also gives you guidelines uh, behind you um, and in front of you. If I click right here, you see it's got the, each of these little icons has two dots. That means there's two different things the camera will do. So now I'm looking out the rear now I'm looking out the front, right? Right out the license plate in the front. If I go over here, I have kind of a, a, a bow, a little wider view. It's, it's, a, it's a little bowed, um, but you definitely have a wider view of the area around you. And then again, for the back. If I go here, I get a straight up and down. This is my bumper. 
the, um, this is of course the graphic area where the computer has kind of it, it looks at a square um, but if I go here I can see the back end so here I can see a bird's eye view of the front end of the vehicle here I can see a bird's eye view of the back end of the vehicle along with some guidance you know if I notice if I turn my wheels all of these guidance lines are dynamic and will move uh, every single one of them on every screen okay I'll go over here I get a front end look for this this is uh, uh, like will be superimposed to look at your vehicle as if it's coming towards you and there it is as if it's going away from you that would take a little get used to but it's a nice feature if you if you take a chance to to try it out and get used to it all right and then over here if you watch my wheels this is my left front tire this is my right front tire so I can see any curbside see where my tires are going see how close I'm getting to that curb and then if I go here oh sorry I can show you the rear of them this is a viewpoint from the mirrors on the outside of the vehicle towards the back so you really get right along the sides of the vehicle and then last you have a trailer hitch mode which points straight down to your hitch so quite quite an incredible camera setup now the one thing I'll point out in here is there is no home button that shows up anymore so here's the, uh, the only case that I can figure out so far where you would need to use the physical home key but push it and you're back moving up here do you want to point out we have a really awesome digital mirror so right now it's just a regular rear view mirror but if I flick the uh, day night switch it becomes digital let me click this here you just click this little button to get the buttons to show up and you have of course your bright and dim controls and then you can then change it to a zoom if you click that button again you can zoom in or zoom out and then you can tilt it up or down so brightness controls you can zoom in zoom out and you can adjust tilt the mirror up or down Okay, moving on down to the climate control system this is a dual zone climate control and the sync button is what will cause everything to be the same so right now if I'm adjusting the driver's side you can see that both temperatures will display the same and I can if I'm a passenger I don't need to touch anything I can just grab my temperature knob and I turn it and notice how they're different now and the sync buttons off for some reason if I'm driving I want both to be the same I just need to press the sync button and it, they automatically match the drivers okay we do have um, touchscreen controls for the climate settings but we also have physical buttons so they're all right down here here's your different modes your defrosters uh, air conditioning your fan speed uh, of course your temperature settings I talked about already and then down here you have your heated seats okay you have a heated uh, back and bottom in the front seats or just a heated back okay? and they are three stage heating both front and back of the seat and then you have a ventilated seat that's also three stage same for the passenger 